Hey guys, Beacon here. Welcome to episode 2 of Nearly Illegal Tips to Improve Your Code Forces Rating. Today, we'll be discussing extreme cases. So, imagine you get a question where you have to do some operation or you have to create some construction and for example, for the operation, you could perform the operation on any way between, for example, 2 and n elements. How do you know where to begin? For example, take this problem, GCD partition. The question tells us that we have an array of integers and we can apply this operation once onto the array. And this operation is, we can take the array and split it into k different sections that are consecutive and k is bigger than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to the number of elements. And after we split it into these consecutive segments, we sum these segments and take the GCD of these sums. What is the maximum GCD that we can get? When I'm stuck with a problem like this, I like to look at extreme cases. What happens if I apply the operation and split it into the smallest number of sections possible, for example, two sections? What happens if I apply the operation and split the array into the maximum number of sections possible, for example, n sections? These are usually the only ones that matter. When I'm solving these problems, I know for the relatively easier problems like div2 abc, the solution relies on some observations. And usually those observations are not random. They happen during specific cases, for example, extreme cases. And sometimes just considering these extreme cases can help you solve these problems. So now going back to the problem, we don't know what the optimal K is for each case. So let's just consider an extreme case. What if K was two, the smallest value for K? Then we have to split the array into two sections and sum those two sections and find a GCD. And we can solve this version of the problem by using a prefix array and just iterating through all the possible GCDs. Now consider what happens if we split it into more than two sections because we're allowed to. If we split it into more than two sections, we'll have more than two sums that we have to GCD. For example, just say we have three, A, B, and C. But realize that we can just combine any of these two sums because, for example, consider A and B. The GCD of A and B is the highest common factor as in the highest number that divides both A and B. But if a number divides both A and B, then it must surely divide A plus B. So the GCD of A, B and C is always less than or equal to the GCD of A plus B and C. Hence, we can reduce every single case to our extreme case and just use a prefix sum to solve the question. Realize what you have done. We have first considered an extreme case, K equals two, then solved it for the extreme case, because solving it for k equals 2 is very easy with prefix sums, and then consider every other case and reduce it down to the extreme case. Now, consider another example problem, asterisk min or template. The problem says that we have two strings, and we want to find this pattern, or the string consisting of letters and asterisks, that we can change into either of the strings we're given. So, in this pattern of the string, we have letters and asterisks, and to form these two strings, we can replace the asterisks with anything we want. So for example, A asterisk can turn into AB, or ABC, or ACC, for example. However, in this pattern or string we have to construct, we can't use more asterisks than letters, so the number of letters has to be greater than or equal to the number of asterisks. If you don't know where to start, because there's so many different possibilities that the construction can be, consider an extreme case. What is the smallest construction that we can make with an asterisk? Well, that would be one letter and an asterisk. So in this case, realize that they either must both start with the same letter or end with the same letter. For example, A asterisk or asterisk A. So the two strings must either start with the same letter or end with the same letter because we can just expand the asterisk into whatever we want. So that case is done. So after the first case, consider the second smallest case, two letters and two asterisks. Realize that if you could put the two asterisks on the either side of these two letters, we can create any string. So as long as the two strings have a common substring of at least length two, then we are done because we can just expand the asterisk to any string we want. So consider two strings that don't have a common substring of at least length two. That means that our pattern or the string we have to produce 
cannot have two letters consecutively next to each other because that means that there's a substring of at least length two. So our construction would be a alternating pattern of asterisks and letters, but that means that we can't have asterisks on both sides. So that means we can just reduce it down to the first case because the asterisk can only be on one side of some letter. And therefore, with these two cases, we can cover every single case and therefore we are done. So again, consider what you've done. We have first considered an extreme case and that was an edge case. So we can just remove that and we consider the second smallest case and that gave us something to work with. And then after we got what the second case actually meant, we could now consider every other case and reduce it down to either the first case or prove that it is impossible. So I hope this video helps you in the future and thank you and stay tuned for more interesting and cool videos.